If you're looking to make an extra income selling products online, you're in for a very special treat because in this video, we're diving into building a legit Shopify store. What this means is that we're gonna show you how to manage and ship the products that you make in-house or if you plan on working with a manufacturer to drop ship products for you, we're gonna show you how to integrate with them so you could focus on the design and marketing of your brand. Now on this channel, our mission is to show you that you have everything you need. So consider subscribing right now if this helps you take the next steps to launch your brand and business from the ground up. To start on this journey, it's important to note that you have many options when it comes to building your e-commerce store. Now I've done a lot of comparisons on this in the past and I'm gonna link them up in the cards right up above. So if you guys wanna see comparisons, they're gonna be right there. But the main reason I feel that Shopify is the best platform to sell products is because they connect to major resources you'll need to actually scale your e-commerce business. So you can start with your free trial through the links right down below as it helps us make more content like this and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Once you start your free trial, you'll be taken to a setup screen and, it's, and this setup screen is called a dashboard. Now Shopify can really seem confusing, especially when you start talking about the themes, products, collections, billing, shipping, legal settings, all this other stuff. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to be a pro. Now Shopify breaks up into two areas, the dashboard and your storefront. Guys, the dashboard is where you manage all your business details. It's the stuff like marketing, inventory, the plugins and those shipping settings that see so confusing. But don't worry, the customers don't see any of this. It's like the back room of an office or a mall. Now the storefront is what the customer experiences. And this is by far the most important part of any e-commerce store. It's what the customer actually sees and is able to interact with. It's the place where you could chat with them, you can have them join your newsletter and even follow you on social media. Now Shopify gives you themes and themes are essentially the website templates. Now Shopify gives you some that are free. And free is great if you're just getting started and testing things out. But guys, if you're gonna take this e-commerce thing seriously, the paid themes, which is the paid stores, will give you the best return on your investment. Now, some people think that themes are like buying skins in a video game, where they don't matter much other than the aesthetic purposes. But I truly felt that way until I purchased a Dragon Ball Z Goku starter pack on Fortnite and just destroyed the competition winning first place. There was a lot of crying going on, but the skin wasn't what made it possible, guys. It was that power up, the weapons that were available in the game that truly made that difference. So think of a theme like a power up that you have in order to convert the traffic that you're gonna get into your stores into paying customers. And a theme I've been testing and using recently has been Day Beautify. Now I was recently contacted by the team there and they asked me if I could review it. And to be honest guys, at first I thought it was just another theme that wants to let people know how cool some of their features are, but it wasn't until I tested it myself and launched some stores with it that I truly understood the power of this. This theme is like unlocking the Kamehameha in Fort night literally obliterates the competition if you can aim it right or the golden gun in og 007 you could literally design almost anything you can imagine with the simplicity of a drag and drop element but in addition to all that it gives you the power-ups that are only available to businesses that pay tens of thousands of dollars to create custom sites it legitimately gives you options that you wouldn't have unless you hired somebody to put them into the store. It's absolutely incredible, and I just want you guys to know that you can get started with a free 14-day trial through the links right down below, and you also get 20% off when you sign up through there. But before we start designing anything and jumping into that tutorial, let's begin with the most important part of actually starting up an e-commerce store, and that's purchasing a domain name and connecting it so you can get online. Set up your online store, you're gonna need to have a domain name. So we're gonna head over to Namecheap.com, which is a place to have domains at a pretty low price. Uh, what's really cool about it is all you have to do is enter in your preferred name and they'll give you a list of extensions in case you don't see the .com available for your brand. Once you're happy with your selection, simply go ahead and check out. In the checkout screen, you're gonna be offered a lot of different upsells. You don't necessarily need to do any of these as we're gonna show you a way to save some money in this tutorial. So we'd greatly appreciate that you use the links that we have in our video description to help us create more videos like this. So now that we have the domain name purchase, let's connect it to Shopify. Now once you create your account and log in, you'll see this dashboard. Now you're gonna go over to domain list. Now if you purchase your domain from a different supplier, you'll have a similar setup to this, so just find the settings that'll take you to this type of screen. Now from here, you're gonna go over to advanced DNS. Now the cool part about Namecheap is that they allow you to easily point it to Shopify through this feature. So just click on this DNS template and then select Shopify from the dropdown. You're gonna to wanna to accept the terms and now you're good to go. Now what this essentially did is that it changed the A record and C name and it pointed it to Shopify. So if your provider doesn't have the automatic filling option like Namecheap does, all you have to do is just manually enter these numbers into the section by clicking add a record. So now that you've configured this, you wanna head back to Shopify and go to settings. 
scroll down to the domain section and click on connect existing domain. Now add a domain that you purchase and hit next. And now all you have to do is hit verify connection and give Shopify some time to pull in the details and you'll be good to go. And if you get a screen like this with SSL pending, that means that the verification is now pending. So now if you type in the domain name at the top, you'll see that it brings you to a Shopify landing page. Now that you have the domain name hooked up, it's time for you to establish your emails that will legitimize the business to your customers. Now, custom emails are sometimes overlooked, but look, it'll really elevate the way that you do business. And a lot of times you can buy them from other suppliers and they'll charge you six, $10 a month. And honestly, it's a complete ripoff. So the best tool I have found throughout the years is to streamline your business using Google Suite. Now, G Suite allows you to connect a variety of domain accounts and honestly to connect your domain which is like your branded name to G Suite just go ahead and follow the prompt instructions that they give you. They'll have you paste little codes into Namecheap where similar to how you did the Shopify one and honestly guys do not worry if you mess this up. If some of the settings don't work it's okay. You're not going to lose access to your website name. You're not going to mess Shopify up or anything else. You can honestly reset the settings and everything will be safe. So just make sure you keep your password safe to your hosting account because that's where your domain name actually is hosted. And after you do this, you're officially plugged into the internet. And yes, guys, the internet isn't just some like thing that's here and you just access over the cloud. It's actually something that has to be stored on a server. So Shopify has its own store servers. Domain area has its own servers. And what you're doing is essentially pointing the domain to Shopify and then Google, you're also pointing them over here. So now everybody has access to something. All right, that's all you're doing here. You do have to do these steps in order to legitimize your business. And now what we just accomplished together allowed us to plug into the internet. Your website is officially connected. You now have a professional business email and you have your operations ready to start scaling online. That was possibly the most boring part about all of this. So if this is your first time building a store, I want you to take a moment, pat yourself on the back, pop open a bottle of water or pop open a special bottle that you got in your closet if you're over 21. And let's jump into the fun part, designing your store. Selecting free themes is great if you're just starting on a budget and testing things out. I'm not gonna knock the free themes because they get you started. What's important about the free themes is to always test the mobile look to see how it responds and see if the information you're putting in there is right. And once you add the theme, it will be imported into your store. You can customize it without publishing and you can add as many themes as you'd like to this little library area right here on Shopify. Only the one you publish will show up. Now, when it comes to editing themes, it's a click and edit type of setup with Shopify. You can easily change up text, upload images. Now, the one thing that you need to know is that free themes do have limitations and there's very little that you can customize and essentially what you see is what you get. Now, you may be wondering, what is the difference between a free theme and a paid theme on Shopify? Now, before we start jumping into editing paid themes, I just wanna disclaim here really importantly that in previous videos, which I'm gonna link right here, I actually customized a free theme and I did it step by step so you guys can follow along to that. But free themes bring you online and are really the bare bones of what you need. Where paid themes give you enhanced editing capabilities. If you look at the theme store and you start to filter it, you'll find over a hundred options all varying in price. Now, a lot of them are geared for niches, so you can filter to the niche that suits you. Like for instance, if you're starting up a pet store or a pet brand, or maybe you're starting up a bag or fashion brand, you can filter through all these. And these themes work great as they take the guesswork out of having you to really think about design aesthetics and it allows you to solely focus on uploading products. Now, the main drawbacks of paid themes is that they still have limitations to them. Now, some of the features that you might find in this pet store theme won't be available in the fashion theme and vice versa, which is why, but this is really the reason why I'm such a huge fan of Debutify. Now, if you get started through the links in bio, you're gonna get that discount code we discussed. But what I wanna really show you guys, there's two things. So Shopify gives you the dashboard and the theme store, and then Debutify has a login for you to be able to actually go through and do some of the tutorials here. So for instance, they have everything that's included with the theme, as well as a support customer chat here. But if you have any questions about how to use something, so for instance, I wanted to set up a FAQ page. They have a video for you here that just walks you through how you'd customize that FAQ. And it just makes it super simple so you don't have to worry too much about how are you gonna use the theme. They definitely put some research into it for you. And they help you by really giving you these tutorials. Now, Aside from just downloading the theme and, uh, and plug it in, and that's pretty much all that's here. They give you some other options for you to take a look at. Like for instance, there's some, um, 
I want to say there is some links here. So they give you a little onboarding here. So you can start optimizing everything that you're doing. And they also give you some integration guidelines, things that work really well with their app. So these are all recommendations. But for the most part, you could really use them for downloading the theme and the support that comes into all the features. To install the theme to your Shopify store, simply click Customize. Now to start, we're gonna add a slideshow to the banner. And to do this, what we wanna do is hit Add Section and select Slideshow. We will remove the featured image that comes stock with this template. And you can always add these back in, so don't stress too much about it. Then we're gonna add a slide. And on the right-hand side, as you can see, you have the option to upload one for desktop and you have an option to upload one for mobile. Now in this area, you're able to upload your own custom photography. But if you don't have it yet, you can always use the free images to build out your store's template. For the sake of this tutorial, that's what we're gonna do. And once you select the images that you want, go back to this side and edit the text on the slideshow. You can then add a new slide by simply selecting the Add Slide button and repeat this process to feature the products that you want to feature on the homepage. Now, if you don't like some of the call to actions like the Shop Now button, all you have to do is go to the bottom of this area and simply remove the label by deleting the text. You can also change where the buttons lead your customers by changing the button link navigation. So for example, the Learn More button can take someone to an article or a landing page for the collection that you feature. Now, it's also important that you keep the mobile design in mind, and you can do that by changing this area to Mobile View. And as you can see, the images that we have look pretty big, so what we're gonna do is make some changes. To make the changes to make the mobile version look good, you can either upload a whole new image for the mobile version, or you could change this section height here and it will auto adjust to better fit the image. Now these are some of the editing capabilities that make this theme really cool because you can fully customize the experience for mobile version or if you don't have that time or the skill set to do that, you can let the theme do the work. You can also see how the homepage looks full screen and make any adjustments that may be necessary. Now the next thing you may be wondering is how do you change the logo on the theme? Now all you have to do is click on header and it'll open up the navigation tab here. Now this part can be a little confusing confusing, but it's super powerful. You see the default version of your logo is what the logo will look like on a white background. So if we upload our black logo, you'll notice that nothing changes. So we have to upload our white logo to the inverted section, which will be what shows up on the darker background. Now once you hit select, the appropriate logo will show up. And as you scroll on the homepage, you'll see that the black logo also appears when the theme turns white at the top. This is a pretty cool feature here. When you switch to mobile view, you'll see that it goes back to the old logo. So you wanna upload a logo for the mobile version as well. Now, if you wanna make adjustments to the theme to accommodate mobile design, there's a lot of features here that will help you customize your overall look and the workflow to the theme. Now let's go back to the desktop version and let's change up some of the color profiles associated with this theme. Because let's face it, purple may not be your favorite color, so let's change it to pink. <laughs> Uh, just kidding guys, let's customize this according to the brand. To customize this, you wanna go to theme settings and scroll down until you see the colors tab. We're gonna change these colors to something a little more simple. And as you navigate the section, you'll see that there's a lot of different color changing options. A lot of them are related to what's on the screen that you're watching. So in this example, buttons is gonna change the buttons for the shop now. We're also gonna change the links and accents. Keep in mind, you can also choose colors that were recently selected. So if you have brand guidelines with color codes that you should be using, this is where you can insert them and quickly reference them throughout the store. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you'll find something called drawers. And no, this isn't the color of your underwear. This is actually the add to cart section and areas that come out of the theme, like drawers do in your room. That also happen to hold your underwear too. <laughs> As you can see, you have the power to change super fine details that truly make this theme feel 100% custom to your brand. An area to point out is the image overlay section. This changes the color that overlays on your images in your theme. So you're able to customize it by just changing this area. We change it to like a little bit of a darker gray. You can change it to whatever color matches your brand and aesthetic. Now you also may wanna customize the favicon and that's the little logo that shows on the top tab here. Right now it shows a Shopify logo. So we're gonna go to the theme settings and then select favicon. You're able to upload your own design. Hit save and to see it, click on preview to see it in the new tab. Now you wanna keep this logo super easy so it shows up 
on any desktop. Now let's fill up the home page by adding a couple more items. To do this, simply add a section and we're going to include a featured collection. On the right hand side, you can select which collection you want to feature and it'll publish to the home page. Since we only have two products on this store, and you may also start with something similar, we're going to change the number of rows and products so it can fill out the site and complete this page. Next, we're going to add a video to the home page. Now it's important to keep in mind that you want to have a video that doesn't link out of your store. YouTube is notorious for this because it'll even suggest other videos for people to watch. And before you know it, they're browsing a Mr. Beast video when they should be shopping for your store. But for the purpose of this example, we're just gonna insert a YouTube video here, but consider using a Vimeo video, which keeps customers on your store. Take advantage of the video section to introduce people through a lookbook or an introduction to your brand. By clicking on any part of the theme, it'll open up the area to edit and you could change words as well as descriptions and the styles that appear. Now, if you wanna change the icons that appear on the page, you can either upload new icons that you created or you can go to this available icon section, which will pull them from Google Fonts. There's a wide variety here to match your theme style. To use one of them, simply click on it and then copy the middle portion and then paste it into your theme area. And as you can see, it updates to reflect that. Now to add social media icons that appear at the bottom, go to theme settings, click on social media, and then include the links to your profiles. In this example, we're just gonna add a word here so you see how they show up. Now to change the positioning and the layout of these icons, click on the section of the theme here and it'll open up the social media panel on the right hand side. Here's where you could change the positioning of the icons in the heading. You can also remove the text from it, and make it look however you want. Now to customize the rest of the site, simply navigate over to the pages that you want to edit, click and upload any images or text that you need. Once you hit save, we have a good amount here to publish. Publish meaning that it's just gonna become the, the actual theme. So whenever you hit publish, it, it'll replace whatever theme was there before. Now, a really important thing to do when you guys are customizing things after it's launched or even get into the practice of it, is anytime you're doing a major change in your testing, it could seem a little like, man, am I doing the right thing? Is it gonna break something? Go, go here and then just hit duplicate. When you duplicate a theme, it's creating a copy of how that was. So then that way, if your theme is already published, so up here it's already published, but it's, it's making a copy here. So then that way you could start customizing this copy without affecting your other copy. Now, some of the features like full preview mode isn't available, but a lot of the important things for you to know that you're customizing the right pages and things are working are available. So it is a great option if you just wanna do some edits after it's live, you wanna get into the practice of customizing offline and then publishing when you know it's done. So every time you design a page and you design it here, you're gonna, you're gonna just make sure, okay, this looks good, I like it. In order to assign it to the navigation, in order for it to be live on your page so people can access it, you're gonna hit on over back to the, to the back office and go to navigation and hit add menu item. Let's call it spring 2023. Now you're gonna go here and you're gonna assign it the page that you just created, spring tech features, add it, and it is now added. Now, if you wanted to add another menu item, let's just say you had spring collection, and then you also wanted the option for somebody to hit like um, the accessories collection, then you could just add another menu item, assign the page that you create or the product collection that you wanna create. So if we just wanted to assign it a, um, let's just call it uh, the joggers, then we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna assign it products. We're gonna sign in wholesale joggers and we're gonna hit add. Now when you do this, you could either keep it as a menu item and if you save it, this is what it's gonna look like. Now when you have all these menu items, you're probably wondering how do I remove the menu items and start organizing them better? I'm gonna show you in a second. But let's just go ahead and click on spring selection. You see the spring tech features page that we created. It's gonna live there. When you click on joggers, it takes you to the product itself. Okay. But let's say you wanted to organize this so the spring collection had joggers underneath it. And this is all just a mock site, guys. You can, I'm trying to get your creative juices going here so you know exactly how you're gonna navigate your site. 
Uh, once you hit save menu, and you come back over here, go over there, you see it removed the joggers, and now it has jogger. And you could also, when you click on spring collection, it has the spring tech features. But if you wanna have the spring tech features also underneath it, what you can do is you could, you could call it, call it tech wear. So maybe your customers aren't gonna click on it, it's gonna be confusing, so then what you could do is you can actually go to the, select this as its own page. So now you got Techware and Joggers under Spring Collection. If they click on Spring Collection, it'll automatically take them to whatever you put there. So now after you create this new page, you maybe you wanna have it under Spring Collection, you want the Techware to be visible. So once you, once you organize it, maybe we want it to be the first thing that comes up. So now we hit save. Now it takes a few seconds sometimes to load guys, so don't get too impatient. But here you have joggers, so now your customer can click on that and say, okay, cool, what's the tech wear under the spring collection? So this is how you'd be able to create an entire dedicated landing page for products. Now this is how you organize those products through the spring collection or menu tabs. You're able to really bring products in here. The next question that commonly comes up is, how do I create product pages? And how do I put all my products on one page so people can just scroll and click? So I just showed you guys how you could break down the collection and maybe do like a spring 2023 and then categorize it. Sometimes people just wanna be able to click on one button and it shows all the products on your store. Now to do that, that's, that's, that's under the product inventory, okay? So right now we have just one product, but let's just add another product for the sake of adding it. And we're gonna import some of the details. You wanna make sure all the products are visible. So product status active after you create it. Now, if you wanna categorize products and collections, guys, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to head on over to the product organization tab here. Now you can put it into collections, um, and not like collections, like they're gonna come after you because you owe money, but you put it into a product collection That'll, that'll live here. So once you create a product, you can go to collections and let's create a collection. Now let's call this one all products because the question was how can we create all the products on one page? Now we can either do it as a tag, you can do it as a category or a product type or product title, but the easiest way to me is a tag and we're just gonna use wholesale brand. So any product that has a tag of wholesale brands will automatically be imported to the all products collection. Now once we hit save here, you are now able to view it as all products. So since we only have two products that's here, but then what you can do too is as more and more products up, upload here, say you had 40 or 50, it'll just you can either have infinite scroll, which Debeautify allows for infinite scrolls on products, or you can have pages where people can hit on more pages and more pages. But in order to bring all your products into one page, you need to make a collection and then assign a tag or some, some category to organize it where it'll import them all there. Now, let's just say I wanted to assign it to the catalog. Now, catalog will bring everything Catalog does bring collections all into it. So by default, that does give all the collections there. But if you had multiple products because you're, you're drop shipping, maybe the collection that you're creating is like the t-shirts or you're making hats or you're making um, some coffee mugs or you're making all this stuff. You can put all of the products under one or you can, or you can organize them and you can say, hey, this is my t-shirt collections. These are my hoodies. These are my, my, uh, my coffee mugs. These are my laptop sleeves. This is my gaming pads. Like you can organize them all this way by assigning them to a specific collection. In this example, we're just gonna assign it all to the wholesale brand collection because we just have one product, but I hope you guys get the point there. Again, if I were to create, so now that has these two products, but if I wanted to create another collection and I wanted to call it mugs or maybe gaming mat then what we do is we'd create a product tag or it could be from a product vendor now if you're drop shipping it could be from the vendor itself and then you could just create the vendor on the product category side which will bring it into here it'll say the vendor is a pleak so it'll it'll start to it'll start to populate whatever's on the organization of that product which is over here anytime there's a vendor involved since wholesale brand is our, we are the vendor, 
Um, when you create dropship products, the vendor can populate their information into here, and that allows you to organize your collections according to the vendor. So if you know you're using somebody for t-shirts, then that, then that vendor you can organize an entire collection for and vice versa. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that clarifies a little bit about how to organize products, how to organize collections, how to organize pages. It could be a little intricate and a little confusing, but just going through this tutorial again, watch it one more time, guys. There's some gold in here. I promise you, you're gonna take a lot of value from it. As you guys see, that's how you create products. That's how you create collections and that's how you assign it to the office. And then that's how Day Beautify plays in and allows you to create such incredible, beautifully designed themes, um, whether it's landing pages, product pages. Uh, one of the things that's really cool is some of the features that are mentioned here. So let's say you are selling a hoodie, but you also want to sell that jogger next to it. All right, so let's head on over to the theme. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit cart. When you hit cart, it's going to bring you to the your cart page. This is the cart that people see as they're checking out. So if they added a hoodie, now they now you want them to include those joggers. So what's cool is you come over here to the cart upsell. Now, by clicking on this cart upsell, it'll create this little drop down menu. You can create an item upsell or a cart upsell. Let's do the cart item upsell. And we're gonna say this is a um, jogger upsell. So add as a new item is what you want to do. So the product trigger will be a hoodie. The product offer is going to be the jogger. The button label and then you can also do this for the other products. So other product triggers like I buy a jogger and I want to offer so this is how you can upsell between a hoodie and a jogger. You can also do an entire cart. So let's let's hit on save now. Okay, now let's add a cart upsell. Now this can just be as a cart in general. So it could be very specific. So if you know, hey, I want, anytime somebody checks out with this hoodie or this jogger, I want them to buy both. That's how you could do it when you do it through item specific. Now, cart upsell is essentially, hey, anytime they check out for anything, I just want to offer this, this product. So you can create another product, maybe a hat. And it's like anytime anybody buys anything, I want them to upsell a hat or a beanie. And that's how you do it with the cart upsell. Now, sometimes when you're watching something, it can seem overwhelming, but just pause it, rewind it, and do the step. That's definitely what I recommend you guys do so you can build out your collections, you can build out your pages, you can build out the strategy. Now, another really quick tip that I recommend is actually have the site design in mind before you even start designing. So for instance, create go, go out and find some examples of pages that you really like and pages and brands that inspire you and kind of kind of take some of the ideas that they have, the way that they flowed and navigated it, especially when the collections are smaller try to find some of these up-and-coming brands or some of these websites that have a really nice curated selection of limited products it'll help you in the design side and then what's important when it comes to creating all these like links and collections and stuff is really mapping it out take a moment to grab a piece of paper and actually say okay what's my menu gonna look like and how are my collections gonna be organized especially if you start drop shipping products you want to be able to organize collections in a way that makes sense for your store. Um, and then pages, like what pages do you need? Do you do you want to have a landing page for each collection? Do you want to have some specific, like if you have a custom cut and sew product, you should probably have a dedicated landing page for the sales aspect of it, like what makes it special and why should somebody buy that product? All the work that you put into it should be told in that story. Once you lay out that site design with like just a basic pen and paper, it's gonna make this job a lot easier so you're not like lost in what you need to do. You've already kind of mind mapped it, you have some inspiration from other brands and businesses, and you're good to go. As you can see, Shopify makes it easy to start listing products. But one thing that's critically important for your e-commerce store is to have product photography. And if you don't have any right now, don't worry, I got you. Let's jump into how you can create product photography easily. Do when it comes to taking product photography is lay your products flat on a simple, clean background. Now, we're using an actual backdrop that's a photo paper. You can purchase this stuff pretty simply. If you're gonna be using it a lot, it's recommended to purchase. Costs about $200 for you to get this kit that we show here. 
Now the beauty about this is that you could do full product photography with people or simple products on the floor. Now the next thing you need to have is a light source. Now the light source that we're doing here is we're just hitting it from one angle. And as you can see, the light has reflected shadows in a creative way. It's also possible to remove the background a lot easier by having good lighting directly on the product. Regardless of how you're taking photos, whether you're taking them with your camera or whether you're taking them with the phone, it's important that you have some kind of stepping ladder or stool that gets you right above the product. You don't want to put your shadows in the, in the actual image. You want to minimize the shadows that are going on the actual photo. So keep that in mind, go above it, remove yourself from the light. And by placing the light at an angle, um, at a specific angle that you like creatively, it allows you to you know, do product photography a lot easier. Now it's time for you to edit the photos. Now if you have Photoshop, you, don't, you can skip this step and do everything on Photoshop, but a lot of people don't. So we're gonna use Canva. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom size. Now it's important that we create a custom size that matches the overall dimensions that Shopify recommends, which is 2048 by 2048. And that's a perfect square in those dimensions. Now, once you have your artboard here, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna upload the files that you wanna take. So we recently took some photography. We're gonna import one of those images to show you how that works. Now, once this product is uploading, what you're gonna do is as soon as it loads, you select it, and now it gets dropped into this board here. As you can see, it has different dimensions, but we're gonna keep it super simple. And what we're gonna do is go to edit image, and then we're gonna go to background removal. So we're gonna do background removal there. And what it's doing is it's processing the image and it's gonna automatically remove the background from it. And with the background remover, look what it just did. It took out a good amount of all of the things that you did not need, but what we can also do is we can come in here and go back to edit image. We can also do the brightness and contrast. So if we wanna make it a little brighter or darker, we can do that there. If you wanna get a little bit more detail there, maybe some of the saturation. And we're gonna give it some shadows there. Now let's go, since we have some already existing, we can give it this shadow here. Now since there were some shadows here after I, I did the background remover, this shadow here is a little awkward when we come to try to create effects. If you do that, it deletes the whole thing. Control Z. So let's zoom into this. Let's just remove as much as we can here. This is cleaning up the shadows a little bit. We're gonna hide these imperfections in a second. From the naked eye, that looks pretty good there. Now we could even go with a brush size a little smaller. Let's clean this up. We could just go there. Go well, as natural as you can. As you can see, I kind of cut something off there. It's not worth it to ruin the image. So. Okay. Now that we got most of the shadows that were kind of awkward, there might be one more right here on the hood. So now that we got most of the big shadows out of the way that were kind of random, we're gonna hit done. And now we're gonna go over to the image again. We're gonna hit apply there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to, to the drop shadows. Let's see some of these options. I like the angled. The angled we're gonna go. You can change the angle. We had a little bit more shadows on this side, so we'll go there. Now I personally like it just like that. So what we're gonna want to do, just enhance it to fit within these dimensions, because again, this is what we're gonna be uploading to the store. As long as you keep all of your photos consistent, you are now able to essentially fit it into one square. And now what you can do is you can share download you can do transparent background or normal the size is 2048 since we're using them for e-commerce we'll keep the white background in there that makes it a lot easier for Shopify to read it and to upload it to product and here's the end result 
But I can't stress it enough guys, product photography is key to selling online. Now hopefully you're watching this tutorial with a product idea in mind, and maybe you already have some designs that you're cooking and you just needed to build a store to launch it. If that's the case, stick around because we'll be sharing some of the finishing touches like the settings and payment details that you'll need to start making money. But if you're watching this right now and you're not 100% sure on where you get your products made, I wanted to mention the two most popular methods that people use to sell almost anything online. The first is what I mentioned earlier, which is drop shipping. Drop shipping allows you to be the designer and the marketer of a product, and you work with a manufacturer who actually makes those products and ships them for you. Best part is that the customer doesn't know that they're going through a metal person because a manufacturer will actually put your branded name on it. They actually take the guesswork out of making anything and allows you to focus on selling. So the better you can sell, the more money you can make. And to install drop shipping apps, it's pretty simple. You just head on over to the Shopify app store. Simply go over to the Shopify app store and look up the product you're thinking of making. In our example, we want apparel printing. You get the top recommended here. You can also browse the library for additional resources. Now on my channel, we specialize in the creation of apparel brands and one of the most trusted and underrated resources to help you is Applique. Once you upload your art and you like the design, you simply will add it to your store. Now by selecting create new product, what you're gonna see here is it's gonna import it into your store. So it's gonna essentially add the product images as well as the description that you preloaded it. And then from here, what you're gonna see is that the vendor is a bleak. So now when you go over to your store, you'll find that this product is now published once you make it live. And this will allow your customer to check out as if it's on your store. Um, and if you wanna add it to a collection, you can just change the collection items and then you can adjust price points for any small, medium, large, or extra large. This is into option number two, and that is in making products on your own. So if you're planning on selling apparel products from home, a great way to do this is through streetcrafter.com. Now on streetcrafter, you can simply upload your designs and you can get press art shipped directly to you. And press art includes the art that you uploaded, so now all you have to do is literally just apply it to a shirt or any other garments. Now you might be wondering, where do I get the shirts? How do I make money on it? Well, these things are called wholesale blanks. I don't like this thing right here. But wholesale blanks don't have any prints on them. They literally just come stock and they're cheaper than a retail blank, which means that you can get something from four to $7 versus paying $25 for just a regular shirt. With the press art sheet and a wholesale blank now on hand, you can start making designs easily. All you have to do is press it on hot and then peel it when it's cold. You now have a finished product that you guys can photograph, you can wear it, and you can start generating sales with. Sometimes this is the most difficult part is how do I make my product and how do I start selling and if I don't have it, well, you just found a solution. And as the sales picked up, you can order more press art and you can stock it and then you can print it on demand yourself. So you're literally operating your own print on demand business from home. And the best part about all this is that you don't need any crazy equipment. You could literally start with $30, guys, and you can start making your first sale. And on that first sale, you just paid back your supplies. Crazy how this works. And it literally takes seconds to accomplish all this. And like I said, all you need is a table and a little workspace from home. So now you're probably watching and wondering, okay, bye wondering how do you go about shipping things yourself well some great suppliers to assist you is going to be some of the following now one of the first ones that you should consider is usps now they have free shipping materials and they make it super easy for you to ship and you can essentially just order these supplies right online or pick them up from the store near you now to filter you can filter by the categories here and as you can see there's a lot of different boxes and the best part about it is that it's all for free now they also give you different options to look at some personalized mailers and some stamps kind of like a more of a usps shipping type of look but usps is a great option if you're just getting some supplies for just shipping boxes really easy now if you want poly bags and more mailers for t-shirts and stuff then uline is going to be a great choice the thing about uline is that they have an option and a wide variety of options for you to choose from from boxes to poly bags to retail store displays to warehouse equipment, anything you can think of when it comes to running an operation, Uline is the place. The thing about Uline is though, is that they are on the higher end of their products when it comes to some of these scales and some of these options. Now, some of the options that they do have are a little more expensive, like for instance, this mailer here. Now, they also have a lot of closable poly bags. This is what you're gonna be looking for if you wanna kind of safely ship some products. Now, as you can see, they have a wide variety of different packaging options, and they have different sizes and dimensions, and with those dimensions and sizes comes a different price. So just keep that in mind. Uline is great for buying things in bulk, 
Now they also have some foam mailers. So like these foam rolls, if you wanna put some better packaging on products, or they also have some of these poly bubble mailers that are great for t-shirts and other items. They even have some things for beauty. So if you're thinking about shipping anything like makeup and things like that, Uline's got you covered. They got a wide variety of packaging options that are great for almost any e-commerce or shipping business. Now, if you want something a little bit more custom than somebody like Sticker Mew is gonna be able to not just create stickers, but also create custom printed packaging. They got some tape, they got some poly mailers, and the thing about them is that you can buy them at low quantities. The only downside is they're a little bit more expensive than if you were to buy them in bulk. But they do make it accessible for you to customize your mailers pretty easily. So if you want a special touch for your customers, Sticker Meal is a great place for you to get started. Now, Amazon is a great option for you guys to come in and just buy some products at a pretty low cost. You don't need any wholesale licenses or any business registration. It's really cool. As you can see, you can buy poly mailers, 500 units for about $30. Now, Amazon is great for everyday shipping supplies as well as if you're looking at different tagging guns or shipping equipment, they're great. Now, if you want custom hang tags, a lot of times brands want custom hang tags for their for their actual products that they want to ship. Well, Cruise Label is a great resource. Now, if you go over to their hang tag option, you'll see that they have a couple of different examples. The thing about Cruise Label is that they can make almost anything super custom. Whatever it is that you want, all kinds of brands are working with them to create something special, and you can too by simply going over into their store. And if you mention from the ground up, you get some free samples. Now that you guys have the supplies, it's time to jump into the nitty gritty details of Shopify, such as the shipping and taxes. And to be honest, guys, it's one of the most confusing parts of setting up a store and probably one of the most frustrating. So I'm gonna do my best to explain this in the most simplest terms so you can execute on it and launch your brand. Now, we're gonna head on over to the bottom here. And this is where the settings tab is gonna be located. Now, under settings, we're gonna start with locations. Now, what you need to know about locations is that this is where Shopify sees that you're going to be shipping from. Now, there's a lot of different options in the setting area. Don't overwhelm yourself. Some things like policies or just boiler templates, you could just drop in that template really easily. There's brand items where you can upload your logo. What we're gonna dive into here is the most important ones, and that's making sure that you can fulfill your products and not lose money doing it. Okay, so to begin with, you wanna be aware of this locations tab. Now, locations is where your business address or home address is gonna be one default location. Whatever address you put to sign up for the store is gonna be a default location. This could be your home address, an office address, anything like that. Now, when you start adding apps or any third-party services, they're gonna be listed on these locations as well. So if you wanna custom add any other services because maybe you have a retail storefront or you have another distribution point for your products, just add the location and then fill in the details there. Now why that's important is because as you start to ship products, it's gonna pull information from these addresses. But we're not gonna to get to a head there yet, just yet. Let's dive into the next one and that's taxes and duties. Now it's gonna be important that you guys set up your taxes and duties for your store. Now what this means is you're gonna to need to legitimize your business in order to collect sales. If you're just getting started, don't let this part overwhelm you guys. We're gonna be linking some videos right up above in the call out cards that show you how to get your sales tax resale certificate. All right, and then from here, uh, all these other information isn't necessarily needed right now. Just focus on making sure that your tax liability for your state is gonna be set up properly to collect. And wherever you register the business, wherever you open up the Shopify account from, that's gonna be the state that you're gonna be collecting taxes from. You're gonna input your sales tax ID in that box right there, and you're gonna be good to start collecting taxes. Now, when it comes to shipping and delivery, this is probably the part that confuses a lot of people. It's questions like, how do I set it up for drop shipping? And how do I make sure that I'm fulfilling orders on time and getting the best prices? Well, we're gonna be answering that in this little tutorial that we're diving into. All the fun stuff I promised you guys. All right, so once you come in over here, you're gonna to wanna to start by adding a package. Now, a package is essentially the thing that you're going to be using to fulfill your products. So if your package is a box, you're gonna to wanna to get the box dimensions there. 
In our example, we're gonna start with poly mailers. Now, poly mailers are those things that we found on Amazon or Uline that you could pick up and just insert the dimensions there. And then you can have it as that being the standard shipping box that you're gonna kind of base all your rates from. Now, the dimensions for this, right? We're gonna insert, there's also ways for you to be able to quote different dimensions and shipping. So if you're considering different size boxes, go into the Shopify shipping calculator and it'll give you some examples of what you're gonna be paying for those dimensions of the products that you're listing. As you can see, the bigger that you make the product or the different details, it'll actually pull information from those services so you can kind of have an idea of how much you're gonna be charging for shipping. Now, in this example, we're just gonna go with the poly mailer. You can go with a standard box. You can do all kinds of other stuff. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna onboard you guys really, really simply. Now, now to set up your shipping rates, you're gonna go over to the general shipping rates right here and you're gonna hit manage. You can see there's two locations and two zones. So when you click on manage, this is gonna be the general profile at the top is for all the products. So everything that you're seeing right here in these shipping zones is gonna apply to all of the products. Now, once you go over to the shipping rates, what you're gonna see is a general shipping zone that's already created by Shopify. Now, this is gonna apply to any of the shipping origins that come by default. So in order to change this, you gotta manage it. So in these rates, if you wanna change any of these rates, like for instance, this $50 and up is free. So this is how you would actually customize free shipping to your store. You would go in and hit edit rate from that edit rate, you can actually customize um, what free shipping would entail. So if you want it to be $50 um, or, or a certain ounce or a certain money amount, you can actually give somebody free shipping. And you can do anything you want with shipping, guys. You can do free shipping, you can take a loss on shipping. I personally wouldn't necessarily uh, advise you to take a loss on shipping. I'd, I'd really advise you to at least break even on it. And now when we go down to the applique side, we're gonna hit manage. And under manage, it's gonna allow us to create custom rates. Now, you're gonna to wanna to download this custom rate table and any drop shipping provider will give you something like this. There are some shipping providers that automatically apply to Shopify's API. Those are very limited. Those are companies like Printful that have special access to, to Shopify services. But when it comes to working with almost any other drop shipper, you're gonna to have to do something similar to this. You have to set up your own shipping rates. And the reason for this is because you wanna be able to make sure that you're covering different weight items and you wanna be able to charge the customer enough to handle your cost of shipping plus any handling that that drop shipper might have. So a plate gives you a rate and they tell you, hey, this is how much it's gonna to cost to fulfill 31 ounces going to be this amount up to this amount is going to cost you ten dollars and fifty cents plus a dollar shipping so you're going to want to charge eleven dollars and fifty cents for that weight now what you want to do is you want to add this to that to that shipping profile for all of these different weights that you see and the reason for this is because you don't know if a customer is going to order 200 products and now it's costing you literally a thousand dollars to fulfill but you only charge them 50 bucks then you may or may not like that. You may not like that price. So you wanna be able to put your future in your hands. Make sure that you set up these rates. Now, the easy way to do this, guys, if you're not gonna be drop shipping, the super simple way to do this is to just set up carrier rates. If you're just gonna be shipping things on your own, then all you gotta do is just set up the carrier rates. And with the carrier rates, it actually imports the data from UPS or USPS or DHL. So at the end, when people are checking out, it'll automatically tell the customer, this is how much you're gonna pay. And it'll charge the customer what you're gonna pay on the back end. That's the really cool part about shipping is that you could do it super custom to what it is that you're selling, or you can just set up a carrier app rate and that'll essentially take care of all the shipping logistics and you don't have to worry about it. Now, in order for this to be activated though, you do have to register with UPS and USPS. They'll prompt you there. Your profile information and your business information will be on file with them. So once you accept all those terms, pretty much good to go. And now what you'll see here is as you're checking out with a product, uh, the customer is going to fill in their info and at the end they're going to see how much they need to pay in shipping if they accept it and pay you for it slap it on the poly mailer and you're good to drop it off at any usps store or ups whatever you ended up selecting and that's pretty much the gist of all the logistics that you have to deal with kind of complicated kind of long-winded but i promised you we we're going to make it as simple as we could 
and now you're ready to be honest with you guys this video took a very long time to complete and i want to congratulate everybody watching yes that means you for getting this far because the reality is very few people actually make it to an end of the video like this and very rarely do the people that make it to the end actually take action so i want to congratulate you and leave you with a very special gift that's called the apparel playbook now in this playbook we break down the steps and strategies of where you are right now to what potential moves you should make in order to start and build your brand from the ground up because throughout this channel, our main mission is to help the underserved and really help them get a leg up to start and grow a brand from home. So if you're interested in getting that, make sure you check the links in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate a subscribe. And if you're interested in learning how to design and better set a collection, make sure you watch this video right here.